Hey guys, I just wanted to show this little cool thing that um, I put together behind the photo booth that I have here. Uh, I do have a travel router that can be um, used as a modem as well. So it could be tethered to your phone and all that. I also got a Raspberry Pi, which is connected to the printer, which I have here. And I'm gonna show you how that works here. Uh, and I kind of just put everything together there but i wanted to give a quick uh a little demonstration of how it works it will shut it shuts all the way <laughs> so give me some time as i go around so this is the photo booth here if i go sorry i don't want to take a picture <laughs> i just want to take a, a sample here so if i hit print it's my daughter she was taking pictures yesterday but i wanted to show you that as you can see, it's printing already. Where I wanted to minimize the setup. Where basically, there's no need for uh, certain things like, you know, the other adapters and whatnot. So this is actually an AirPrint uh, Raspberry Pi, which uh, I set up. And it's pretty easy to set up. But if you can see here, if we select AirPrint and we change the printer, it picks up the photo booth printer automatically. Mind you, this is not under uh, internet right now. It is only on its local network, which is happening uh, without any data. So if you want to run data, you have to hook up uh, uh, internet to the travel router that I showed you in the bottom. But I wanted to show you something cool, which was because I have everything hooked up to that um, travel router, you can actually have a separate iPad. Here, I gotta log in. There it is. And as you can see, everything's wireless. And like I said, that's just us. <laughs> My daughter and I print, print, and it sends it automatically to that same network. So this is, you know, used for sharing stations, which I love this uh, Luma Booth app because it can do that. But as you can see, it's fast <laughs> and no issues. So there's no need to configure the actual Raspberry Pi once it's all set up. And it's literally right there. So my recommendation is to use something with a hardwired line like Ethernet into this travel router. So these are inexpensive, inexpensive items that you can just buy off Amazon. And it's just programming the way you want them. What's neat about this uh, travel router, if you can kind of see there, so it's got a WAN port to hook up directly to, you know, internet. If your uh, venue has internet and they give you hard wire, you can also pick up um, wireless from here as well and make it like an access point, but that's just hard to do because uh, it's gonna lose connection. <laughs> or you can hook up a phone to the USB port there. So once you do that, you're able to uh, have your phone act as a uh, hotspot, which I'm still working on because I want to minimize the setup. As you can see, the only cables coming out of here is power. Before I get any hate about, you know, the cables or whatever sticking out, that's it. Then the door closed, right? So that's what I'm trying to do is just minimize that, which technically will be power, right? Once I get that adapter hook uh drilled or hold into here it should be good I, I try to cable manage them as best as i could just kind of stick them there in that channel there's the power adapter for it it's got three devices on there and we got the printer hooked up so if you can see here we got uh, one of the usb ports hooked up to the printer so i'm just trying to show you to to show you that <laughs> this is no joke this is a very easy easy I want to say hack, it's more like a mod or whatever. And this acts like a printing server. So the setup for the Raspberry Pi, it does take a um, couple hours to do, but it's pretty easy if you know how to program uh, Ubuntu or Linux, uh, or if you've used Terminal, very easy to do. Just gotta install the printer drivers, install the printer, uh, pretty straightforward. But like I said, once that's done, it's set up. There's no need to log into it. Meaning, you know, uh, 
using a computer monitor or keyboard or mouse. Nope, once it's set up, it's set up. That's what the uh, the Raspberry Pis are known for, is for all that. As you can see, I open it, and I do have a little fan to it, so I bought this case separately. And this uh, Raspberry Pi runs about 80 bucks. And the case was like 20 bucks, and it came with the power supply and all that. But that's all it is. It's a micro SD card running the OS, and with the programming that you want it, which, you know, like we talked about, it's just adding the Raspberry OS and installing the printer driver. And that's it. So basically, it's its own little server for the printer. So one of the mods that I'm working on is buying uh, a an adapter to make a hole. I'll show you here in the picture where I can just basically have uh, the USB printer and the modem here into this accessory, which makes it easier if I just make a hole somewhere up here and I can just connect the printer uh, USB port. And if I want my phone to act like a hotspot, I'll do that as well so that it's channeled and connected to the travel router, which is already set up to do in its uh, admin page that every time I hook up my iPhone, it turns it into a hotspot automatically. So I don't necessarily have to go and mess with any of the program programming aspect of it because it's just set and go. But I wanted to show this video to show that it is possible to do something like that. And like I said, it works. <laughs> so there it is it works with that and if you have other devices connected to that wi-fi which that travel router pro provides right as long as everything's hooked up here so because the raspberry pi is hooked up directly into this so any devices that connect wirelessly into the travel router like if you have other ipads besides this one or other sharing stations you can do that now and i'm gonna get this question asked a lot so um as you can see, it's hooked up to the Wi-Fi, uh, to that travel router. And I want to make sure that I'm always hooked up to 5G. As you can see, the data was fast once it sent the image. Because you want to be on, on a very fast speed network to be able to do that. Because these pictures do take a lot of space um, and require a lot of transfer speed. So I had to recommend doing 5 uh, gigahertz to get achieve that. And... As you can see also on this iPad as well, it's also hooked up to that Wi-Fi. So, um, and I'm going to get asked this question, so I just wanted to make sure. And you can see it doesn't have any internet, so uh, it works without internet. You can hook up that hotspot, or I'm sorry, that travel router into a phone or a hotspot device, you know, to activate the data and do all the, the sharing functions and all that. So let me try to go in here. See if I can print another. I'm not sure how fast it prints. And this thing is fast. Yeah, this thing is a beauty. <laughs> I highly recommend it. Uh, I know a lot of people are using, you know, different solutions for it. And I don't know, that took like less than 10 seconds. There might be people asking about which printer it is. Is the DNP DS? rx1 high speed hs as you can see it runs pretty fast so i love this thing but i know people are using different solutions to do stuff like this so i just wanted to do a quick video and show that it is possible to do it with a raspberry pi um just because it's you know it's a whole different ball game after this so if you have any questions please let me know i will post an update on my instagram or facebook so uh, once I have that adapter, I ordered it from Amazon. It won't get here until tomorrow, I believe. So I still got to, you know, cut the hole and do all that. But I want to make sure that we just hook it up and have it ready to go so that the cables, the only cable one sticking out here is power. Basically to power this whole thing because uh, it's powering the, all those devices and it's also charging the iPad, as you can see there. There it is. So yeah, if you have any questions, please reach out. I'll try to make a tutorial video on how to program that Raspberry Pi because I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions about that. And it's, you know, it's a very easy process and it's, uh, it requires patience. <laughs> but if you know what you're doing, uh, yeah, I recommend it. So it's about 80 bucks for that and the travel routers run from, you know, 60 to 100 bucks or so. But 
I highly recommend this one. This is a pretty neat one. We've used this for pretty much a lot of uh, places I've done remote stuff. So um, the other thing that I recommend before I forget is that make sure because this is has all wireless on it, right? I turn off the Wi-Fi on here and this does have wireless. This power adapter, for some reason the shielding is not, you know, um, protected or doesn't have enough of the of the shielding to cover the wireless signal. So if you were to put the power brick closer to where wireless is, your lights and everything are gonna flicker. If you use some type of device that has like um, <clears throat> a wireless remote or something like that, I was running into that issue. So, but after separate them, it, separating them, it did fix the issue, so. And the reason I'm doing this video is I basically want a simple setup where I can just show up to the venue or wherever it is and just show up with the case this is the case for the photo booth and the printer and just you know the power cable and that's it right so we can just hook up everything to where it needs to go right we hook up the printer pretend we have you know those ports here that i was talking about and that's it right and it's all set up ready to go without having to worry about you know any of the setup all i have to worry about is the design and everything that they want for uh their photos and all that but otherwise that's all I want, right? It's just a simple setup with everything programmed and everything good to go so that if I have any photo booth attendants that want to do that, they can do that. And it's just easy as if we have any issues with the Raspberry Pi, all we do is shut it off. There's a little switch that comes with that case. So we shut it off and there it's off. And that's all it takes to reboot it. Literally, that's a pretty cool idea. I don't know if you can see it, but it is a switch and now it's on so yeah that's the main goal to do here in this video is to show you guys simpler better ways for uh photo booth setups if you have any questions please let me know and i hope you guys like this video thanks